Hi, so in this video, I just want to show you how to connect SCAMP in Python with Super Collider using OSC. Now, if you don't know, OSC or Open Sound Control is a really great way for applications to send messages back and forth. And as the name suggests, it's particularly good for audio applications. And this is what we're going to use to communicate between Python and Super Collider. Before we get started, let's take a listen to this synth def here. So it's a simple granulator using the grain sign UGen. As a trigger, it's using an impulse at the rate of 20 impulses per second. And I've created a randomized grain frequency with a center frequency and some amount of variation. So if frequency variation is 0.1, that means that it's varying about 10% in frequency. And I've also randomized the pan so that the grains can say center around the middle, but move back and forth by 0.3 to the left or to the right. Finally, there's a gain, which is multiplied by the granulator in the end. So to start with, I've got a simple scamp script set up here. This should look very familiar if you've looked at any of my other videos. Import everything from scamp, create a session called s, and then ask the session to create a new part. But unlike most of the other videos, instead of saying new part, we're saying new OSC part. We give that part a name and a port number to send messages to stored in the variable 2SC, and then we're going to ask that instrument to play a note. Pitch 72, the C above middle C, volume 0.7, and duration 1. Now you might be wondering where the heck did I get 57,120? This number needs to be the port that Super Collider is listening to. And you can figure out what port Super Collider is listening to by using the net address class. So if I run this line, net address dot lang port in Super Collider, it prints 57,120. In my experience, it's pretty much always 57,120. I'm not sure what numerology they used to pick that number, but just to be safe, you can always run net address dot langport. Now the way of listening to and responding to OSC messages in Super Collider is to use the OSC func class. And as a good starting point, we can actually run OSC func dot trace using hide status messages so that we don't get a bunch of annoying status messages. And if we run this, it will print out here in the post window any time that we receive an OSC message. So let's try running our scamp script and see what happens. And I'll try it again. So you can see right down here, this script is causing two messages to be sent. First one with the address synth1.startNote, and then one with the address synth1.endNote. And the numbers that go along with it are the information that Super Collider would need to know in order to render this note. This is the pitch, 72. This is the volume, 0.7. And this first thing right here is the note ID. We want to be able to play lots of different notes all overlapping on one another if we need to. And the note ID helps keep track of which note any given message is referring to. So for instance, if I add a second note here, let's say 74, and run the script again, you can see that we get a start and end note on 72 and a start and end note on 74. And the note with pitch 74 has ID 1 as opposed to 0. Now if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that SCAMP is really flexible and can do pitch bends and rising and falling dynamics within a note. So let me show you what that looks like in terms of OSC messages. If I say 72 comma 70 as a list, SCAMP's going to interpret this as a glissando down from the C to the B flat below it. And if we run this, now, in between the start and end note, you get a bunch of change pitch messages with the address synth1 slash change pitch that are gradually moving the pitch down from 72 to 70. The same thing happens with volume. If we say 0, 0.7 here and we run it, now we're getting still the change pitch messages, but also change volume messages. But of course, Super Collider is way more flexible than just pitch or volume. So it would be a shame if we couldn't access anything other than that. And in fact, the easy way to do that, I'm going to undo those changes, 
is to use the final properties argument here. There's a number of different ways to do this. A really easy way is just using a string. So you can say param bendiness colon four. And if I run this, then you see an OSC message appears synth one slash change parameter slash bendiness as the address for node ID zero, change it to four. You can also pass a dictionary, a Python dictionary here in the properties argument that looks like this. And this is gonna be more convenient if actually what you wanna do is pass a variable or a list or something like that. In fact, in this case, let's pass it a list. Let's say that we want the bendiness to start at four and go down to zero. Try running this example. And you can see we're now getting a bunch of different change parameter bendiness messages, gradually ramping down to zero. In general, any property, either in a dictionary or just as a string, where you prefix it with param underscore, will be treated by Scamp as an extra parameter of playback, the name of which is whatever comes after that. So hopefully you can see that this is already really flexible. And if you know your way around Super Collider OSC funks, you can set up listener functions to listen to all of these OSC messages and spawn synths accordingly. However, it's a little time consuming to do this, especially because you also want a way of keeping track of the node IDs and mapping messages to the correct synth. Thankfully, I've made a simple Super Collider extension to make all of this effortless. And you can install that extension via the Quarks package manager. So if we go up here to language quarks, you can scroll down and search for SC scamp utils. Because I've already installed this quark before, for me, it's up at the top. And all you have to do is click the plus sign and it installs the quark. Then you're gonna wanna click recompile class library and reboot the server. At this point, Super Collider knows about a class called scamp utils and in particular its function instrument from synthdef. And pretty much all you have to do to have all of these OSC messages set up automatically is stick your synthdef inside this function. Run scamputils.instrument.synthdef and pass it your synthdef. However, you can see that there's a couple changes between the original synthdef and the one I'm passing to this function. And I'll go over those real quick. The first is that since every note coming from Scamp will have a pitch and a volume, you need your synth to have a pitch and volume argument. Scamp utils actually looks at the names of the arguments. So in the original synth, I had gain, and I'm changing that to volume. It's functioning exactly the same way. It's just multiplying by the granulator, but now it's called volume. For pitch, Scamp utils is expecting an argument either called freak, F-R-E-Q, or called pitch. And it's gonna treat these two arguments differently. Freak is gonna be in Hertz. So whatever pitch value Scamp is sending get converted to frequency before being passed to this argument. If for whatever reason in the synth def you want the MIDI pitch value, then you can use an argument called pitch and it will get passed as is. You'll get actually the number 72 instead of whatever frequency that corresponds to. Finally, this synth that we created, it goes on forever, whereas notes in Scamp have a finite lifespan. In order to communicate the lifespan of the note, you need your synth def to take a gate argument. When the note starts, gate is sent a one, and when the note ends, gate is sent a zero. The easiest way of implementing this is to use the convenience class envgate. All you have to do is pass it the gate argument and pass it a fade time. I made it 0.1 so that it fades in over 0.1 seconds and fades out at the end over 0.1 seconds. And then multiply that env with the source and the volume. By the way, envgate by default uses a done action of two. If you're familiar with this aspect of Super Collider, what that does is automatically free the synth when it's done. So now, having made all of these adjustments, all I have to do is evaluate this block of code. If I run it, now the synth def has been compiled and added. All the OSC listeners have been set up and we're ready to go. 
So if we go on over to Python now, I'm gonna remove this param bendiness because it doesn't mean anything. Well, actually there's one more thing that we have to do. All of the messages that we're sending are prefixed with synth1 because that's the name of our part in Python. But the name of our synth is cloud. Now you can actually set up this part to use whatever prefix you want, but by default it uses the name of the part. So why don't we just change the name of the part to cloud and let's see how it goes. There you go. We're now playing notes in Super Collider from Scamp. And if I play a few of these in a row, it'll do just that. If I wanna do a glissando, let's say I wanna go from 72 up to 90 over the course of two beats, let's listen to that. I could do a melody with a for loop, so for pitch in 78, 77, 70, 71. Have it play a note of that pitch for one beat. Run this. Let's say that I want all the notes to fade out. I could make the volume go from 0.7 to zero. Now, I don't know about you, but I couldn't really hear a very clear difference between 78 and 77. And the reason for that is the frequency variation argument of the synth was a little too high. So what if we wanted to control that argument from Scamp? The way to do that is, as I mentioned before, using the properties argument. So param underscore freak variation colon 0.01. Let's see if we can hear it better now. And these parameters can be animated as well. I could make it start very finely pinpointed around the frequency, but end really spread out. Lastly, I just wanna show you that these notes can overlap and there's no problem whatsoever. So instead of just playing the notes as is, I'm gonna add the argument blocking equals false, which if you remember from my previous videos, causes us to immediately move on to the next line of code rather than wait for the note to be done. Now this would cause all of the pitches to happen simultaneously, but I actually still do want to delay between them. So I'm gonna import the random library and add a line here, wait random dot uniform 0.5 to two. So this will cause it to wait a random amount of time between half a second and two seconds, or let's make it a quarter of a second. And I'm gonna make the notes last a little longer. I'll make them last two seconds. So what this should do is cause the notes to overlap with one another. The notes started right here, but then we immediately wait for some indeterminate length of time, then play another note, wait an indeterminate length of time. And because the amount of time is less than two seconds, they're gonna overlap. Let's take a listen. Oh, actually I need a comma right here. Okay, let's go. I'm actually gonna make the pitch a uniform random number between 40 and 90 to make things spaced out a little bit more. Again, floating point pitch, no problem. So let's take a listen. Or rather, actually, I want this to go on infinitely, so I'll say while true pitch equals random.uniform 40 comma 90. Remove the colon, and I'll run that. <laughs> So hopefully that gives you some sense of how to communicate between Python running Scamp and Super Collider.